Hello again. And welcome back to the people online as well. Happy to have you here in a sunny Gare Maritime in Brussels for our next panel discussion. The original Bauhaus movement was built on the ruins of the First World War, as you may know. It was inspired by arts and crafts movement in the UK and all branches of the arts were considered equally important in creating this new world inspired by a very humanistic vision. I want to um, cite two quotations by Walter Gropius, one of its founding fathers. First, a modern, harmonic and lively architecture is the visible sign of authentic democracy. And another thing he's uh, been quoted saying, our guiding principle was that design is neither an intellectual nor a material affair, but simply an integral part of the stuff of life, necessary for everyone in a civilized society. Words by Walter Gropius. The next panel will look at what inspiration the original Bauhaus still has to offer and how to take those ideas forward into the future, into the 21st century, in a thoroughly changed world, as we all know. Focusing specifically on architecture and design and in line with Gropius's ideas about preserving and passing on craftsmanship, the panelists will discuss what that means for education in particular in this day and age. And to guide the discussion, I would like to welcome Sneska Kwadflich Milailovic, Secretary General of Europa Nostra, a network of organizations presenting themselves as a European voice of civil society committed to cultural heritage. So, Sneska, the floor is yours. Have fun. Thank you so much, Annelise. Dear colleagues and friends, uh, welcome to our session on education and the uh, European Bauhaus. Let's imagine it. Um, greetings to you here in the audience and greetings to the audience following us online. Um, as you have heard, I represent the uh, European voice of civil society committed to cultural heritage. And it's indeed my honor to moderate this session. And together with our two distinguished speakers, we shall explore how art, design, architecture, and cultural heritage can help shape better societies and how education can support this vital goal. We shall divide this conversation, in a sense, in three big parts. We shall look into the past, to the present, and to the future. So first, we will uh, look into the lessons and inspiration that we are getting as we have just heard from Annelies, from the original Bauhaus school and movement. And you know, what are the lessons that we mm -hmm. can get today from this movement? Then we will transition to the present day to see what is the situation now and how much of these lessons and how much of the values of the new European Bauhaus are present today in, in our educational systems. And then, we should look to the future and see how we can do better and how indeed art, design, architecture and heritage can uh, further inspire and improve our educational system as a support to the new European Bauhaus. We have heard yesterday from President Ursula von der Leyen indeed that uh, the new European Bauhaus is about uh, giving soul to the European Green Deal and to the green transformation, which means that it should help the transition, the change of our mindset. And if we are talking about the change of our mindset, we have to invest in education. So let me introduce our two speakers. I'm delighted to have them with us because they are the perfect, uh, perfect contributors for this conversation. <laughs> First of all, I want to greet Danica Dakic, who is an artist. Danica and I were born in the same country, which doesn't exist anymore. I was born in Belgrade, Danica was born in Sarajevo, so she is from Bosnia, Herzegovina. Her artwork extends from video and film to photography and installation, addressing topics of art, history, to highlight cultural memory and identity, language and social roles in their constant transformation. She, was, she has exhibited many times 
including at the Bauhaus Museum Weimar in 2019 and also in the same year in the Biennale uh, in Venice. And she's also professor at the Bauhaus Universität Weimar and head of the International Master of Fine Arts program Public Art and New Artistic Strategies. Petri Suomala comes from Finland, so from the Balkans we go to the uh, Nordic, uh, um, the, the Baltics. Uh, uh, so it, he is the vice president for education at the Alto University in Finland, and he's chairman of the board in Alto Executive Education Limited. And in addition, he's chair of Alto's Learning Steering Group, which prepares, coordinates, monitors, and follows up joint strategic and operative issues in education and learning. And Petri, you have an academic background as professor of industrial engineering in management. So we have an artist and somebody coming from the educational um, and academic university world. Danica, I would like to ask you to, to start. So the lessons you are living now and working in Weimar, you're coming from the Balkans with all the difficult experiences of a war, and now a sort of post-war situation. What the lessons from the original Bauhaus school, and we have just heard also founded just after the First World War, what it meant for your own work, uh, and uh, you know, what are the lessons that you want to share with our audience? I think you know the old historical Bauhaus is actually not only just one heritage cultural heritage consisting of artworks and ideas, you know, it also provides a great potential for the future. You know, we can learn from this heritage a lot because it, uh, for me, it, it, it has this uh, really very, very utopian idea, uh, ideas which are still very alive and that could be activated for the future. And uh, uh, I'm also somebody who really uh, uh, think that the, this, the, this world doesn't start with me and hopefully will not end with me. So I mean that it's really very important that we, you know, try to understand all the complexities, you know, uh, of, the, of the present and the, the history is part of it. As, as an artist and also as a professor heading this really wonderful, unique program, Public Art and New Artistic Strategies, which is highly international one. So it means the 90% 90, 90 of the students are coming from abroad. So we are a really all very, very diverse group of artists working together and we are all the time actually uh, translating Bauhaus. So it means Bauhaus is not something static. You know, Bauhaus is something to be translated. As you know, the history of this movement is shaped by flight and migration. Bauhaus was uh, founded in Weimar, went to Dessau in 1925 and then to Berlin and then the artists and architects and designer from Bauhaus went into the whole world you know and then you uh, and there are a lot of a lot of uh, ways of be Bauhaus in the world so they translated this idea you know in very different artistic communities, contexts, cultural contexts, and, uh, and that is what we are actually trying to do again in a new way, you know, because we live in a very, very complex and very crisis-shaped reality, mm -hmm. you know, which is very complicated, and I think we can really learn from this heritage, and we can uh, activate the utopian potentiality of this heritage for the future, and that is something what I'm doing as an artist and as a professor, and we will show some slides afterwards, but let's now go mm -hmm. give the word to, to Petri. Thank you. Thank you, Danica. So, uh, you know, from the... Uh, Bauhaus University in Weimar, we go to Alto University. <coughs> I think there is a lot of collaboration yes. with you. Know what it means for you uh, in Finland uh, and for your university and you personally, how do you uh, reflect on this issue? Uh, for me, it's actually very, um, uh, I would say, warm connection to these original ideas of, of Bauhaus. Uh, I really uh, I think we, we resonate well uh, with, the, with the Bauhaus University. Alta University is not named 
as a Bauhaus university. But if we look at the history of merging three universities, one of arts and design, uh, one of, of business and one of technology or engineering, we are actually, we have been building a, a Bauhaus university, if, if you wish. Uh, for me, uh, there are perhaps three main lessons from the uh, Bauhaus movement uh, as it was in, in, the, in the start of the 20th century. Uh, I think what is still important in our curriculum and in, in our uh, educational structure is that uh, it's important to, to look at the basic things before going into application, understanding material, understanding color, understanding uh, uh, different, these kinds of uh, basic issues reasonably well. It sort of a builds an important foundation. And then uh, the, the second very important aspect is actually uh, that along the course of the studies, it makes sense to, to practice things. It's, it's not just uh, learning by, by reading or, or listening, but really doing things, the craft, the craftsmanship and, and, and doing things, uh, like getting your hands dirty, that's important. And maybe the third thing uh, that I still think is visible in our uh, sort of a educational philosophy is that uh, there's understanding that many of the big things actually comes from the small everyday uh, focuses. It's not just something that it's handled in, in festivals or, or set up celebrations, but really look at the everyday life of individuals, look at the, the, the course of events in the world at the very detailed level. There, the biggest impact will actually emerge. So, would you say that um, all, these, all these lessons from, uh, from the past are well understood and well uh, implemented today in, uh, in the universities that, uh, and not only universities, in, mm. in the sort of way that we are, that we are living and experiencing? Would, would, you, would you feel that today, in the 21st, 100 years later, at the time when we are uh, having this new European Bauhaus, that, that we are really um, following these, these, yeah. these messages. If I may, I actually, uh, I mean, because uh, I, I think it's a, it's a kind of a, it makes sense to remind ourselves on, on those principles because one of the uh, sometimes tension is that we tend to focus on different disciplines and silos so much that it, sometimes takes air from the, uh, from the activity of actually crossing borders and, and joining forces. I'm not saying that it's wrong to focus on, on disciplines because it's, uh, when we collaborate, we, we really need good, specific and focused expertise. But at the same time, we have to be careful that there is a phase where we combine our forces, we combine arts, design, architecture, engineering, business even, together to make something meaningful that is holistically uh, sort of a, uh, sensible and, 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 and uh, makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think the, 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 the cultural heritage of Bauhaus is actually like every great cultural heritage in the world, some kind of terra incognita. It contains a lot of elements just to be discovered, you know, just to be explored. And I think that is like every artwork as well, which is good one, you know, so that you actually cannot explain, doesn't give so many answers, but it gives a lot of questions for the future. And, it is, and, and if some cultural heritage is really kind of alive, it means there are a lot of elements that to be explored. So it's not just about the messages, it's about really this kind of unexplored terrain that we have somehow to, to, to learn or, or to, to, to somehow uh, um, 
occupy, you know, and, and bring to another mm. meanings. And that is, I think, what is it about. Mm. And that was actually the reason for us in Weimar that I uh, started in 2015 one project, kind of series of uh, uh, art, um, artistic research exhibitions uh, called Imaginary Bauhaus. And we started with this first uh, uh, and all this Bauhaus collection, art collection of Weimar, which was um, uh, founded by Walter Gropius and uh, uh, the then museum's director Wilhelm Köhler in Weimar. And it uh, uh, contained uh, 168 pieces, art pieces, um, uh, selected by the students, so the oldest established Bauhaus uh, collection started with works by students, you know, and that was for me a kind of really a trigger to think how can we imagine a future, a future exhibition of, of, of the Bauhaus, you know, and that was the idea that we started with artists to produce this kind of yeah. new Bauhaus collection museum collection which is uh, actually changeable you know the works are performative uh, participative new forms of which are dealing really with these topics and with this kind of uh, uh, issues uh, kind of also kind of political and social uh, um, uh, moments of this heritage and that we activated for the future and uh, you know somehow to to work with all this things which are actually are shaping our present as well. So you didn't um, uh, wait for the launch of the new European Bauhaus for the president no. of the European Commission. No, so, no so we your started in 2015 and, your... and one group of our students, international group of our students, actually did this work as a performative work with, I don't know, 269 kilometer going from Weimar to, uh, to Dessau and then to Berlin, you know, when we started with, uh, uh, it was a collaboration with Max Ngocchi Theatre in Berlin, and we came to the opening of this uh, exhibition Berliner Herb Salon in 2015, and then uh, uh, launched there one, uh, uh, one workshop with our students to talk and to work on, on topics on flight and migration. And it was exactly in mm. 2015, and as Germany also really thought about you know how should be the borders of Germany open for the for the for the uh, uh, refugees and so on and nowadays we have exactly <laughs> the same situation mm. or the new situation and with with the Ukraine and so on so you see uh, this uh, flight and migration shaped very strong the heritage of Bauhaus you know, also in a positive way, because Bauhaus is shaped by this traumatic experience of flight and migration, but it's still a dream. Mm. You know, traumatic and dream spaces are the same sides of the, of the one, of the one okay. face, you know, so that is, that is actually very important, and that is the reason why is it still alive because it's not boring, it's, it's, it, has a, mm. it has a traumatic experience and it has a, still a dream, you know? And I think there is the reason why these young people from all over the world, you know, going, still going to, to, to Bauhaus University because they have own image of what is it, Bauhaus. Mm. And, that is, no. and that is very interesting, you know? Mm. No, but that is a, a great, thank you for using the words you know, trauma and dream, because yeah. it was exactly the words also yesterday during the panel discussion yeah. on Ukraine and the relevance on the new European Bauhaus for the mm. recovery that will eventually yeah. come in Ukraine. It was, dream was still present. But, you know, with all what you have said, you, we already made the transition to in <laughs> what's happening now. There we are. Thank you for, you know, uh, placing this conversation in that uh, mm. wider historical context. So we are going to sort of discuss now um, about these principles of the new European Bauhaus, the principles of a, a more beautiful, more sustainable, more inclusive society mm. that we need to build. And so I would like to ask you from your own experiences, how, um, how much these principles are already present 
in, uh, in your own work, uh, uh, in your university, to give, me, uh, give us and to the audience a little bit, you know, how does it work in practice? Uh, and, and, and is it a, a utopia? Is it something we are aspiring or is it already a reality. I understand, uh, you know, Dani said that you will show us some uh, some um, illustrations <laughs> of, of your of your work that would illustrate, in fact, uh, the the implementation it... of okay. of these principles. So that is this imaginary Bauhaus museum. We started in 2015 with our students, and that is something I will come back again. And that was this walk. I mentioned from, from, from Weimar over Dessau to, uh, to Berlin. And then you see uh, another work which is, goes like more in the direction of design. And you mentioned also that this kind of interdisciplinarity is also very, very specific for the Bauhaus. It means this interdisciplinary approach between different uh, disciplines, like between design and, and architecture and art. And there is one uh, work, Be a Ninja, by uh, Paloma Sanchez, uh, one artist from Brazil, who created this wonderful object out of, of this, uh, how do you say, this sphere for uh, uh, this ajitsa. Uh, wire. Wire, 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 uh, you know, so you used, and then you see so somehow how can you uh, uh, kind of create some kind of weapon to, 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 to define yourself, you know, in a kind of a very imaginative way. And that was also one very, very uh, uh, amazing project. It's a called Solution Mat. You see, uh, you said it was in front of the uh, Maxingoki Theater in Berlin. And uh, the artist created this uh, kind of arena situation, you know, and there were audience around that they could uh, ask questions like, how many refugees should be accepted by Germany? And then they are fighting for yes and no. So, so it is kind of wrestling a game, you know, and then somehow uh, and comes also from the uh, ancient Greece with this kind of arena and, uh, and somehow question and the democratic uh, society and so on. So Solution Met, that was one of the projects. And that is also something about inclusion. How can we feed each other? That was hot pot. So that uh, the artist created this, uh, uh, this dinner and food was very, very, always very important for the Bauhaus, for the Bauhaus uh, um, life in the, in, in the in, I think, in the in the, for the historical Bauhaus. And of course, coming from Weimar, we are very, very uh, uh, informed about everything, what food was actually, uh, the meaning of the food for the Bauhaus mo movement. And so that the artist, uh, Lena Scraps, created this kind of, sp a long uh, kashika spoons. A spoon? Spoons, mm. you know, so that, that you cannot eat it, uh, but you can feed somebody else, you know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very beautiful, you know, in the, in the way that you... And that is another project, you know, as uh, Sneshka mentioned, uh, uh, I'm coming from Sarajevo and uh, uh, I came to Germany uh, uh, before the war in Bosnia, but of course this war in, Bo in, in the Balkans shaped very strong my life and my art. And as I uh, became professor at the Bauhaus University, then we organized a, a, a big project with six education, artistic educational project on the Balkans, and then this in the Mostar, you heard probably of this divided city, you know, uh, which was really very, very destroyed during the Balkan Wars. And uh, we did a project with six uh, uh, academies and art schools from Sarajevo, Mostar, Banja Luka, Belgrade, um, Athens, and Pristina in Mostar and all the students came together and worked together and it was a kind of really very, very innovative project for this region because uh, the public art is uh, not really present there in the, in the educational system and so on. So mm. that is 
And that is one really beautiful action with this giant broom, kind of witch's craft of the art in, the, in Sarajevo, <laughs> that, that was really very, very uh, well received by the, uh, by the people. You know, the city is very shaped by this kind of uh, um, yeah, failed transition processes and so on. So the, the passerby were very amused, you know, to see the kind of giant brunt which will clean this situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's thank you. Thank so, you so much. Uh, uh, this togetherness is going like a thread through all these uh, projects. So, Petri, yeah. uh, you also have something to show yeah, us. I actually, I actually brought one, uh, one very fresh example uh, from Alta University. It's a, it's a book called Designing Change. Uh, and it's all about uh, collecting different approaches uh, produced by Alta University professors lectures and researchers where design, art and creativity has been put into the uh, work in a, in a sense in, in context of organizational and societal change. So there's a quite rich set of examples included in this book. Just if, if I may mention just a briefly a couple of ones, one related to, 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 to oceans and, and, and sea uh, uh, the healthiness of, of, of seas called Baltic Sea Lab, where uh, creative methods have been used in, uh, in sort of activating people to, to understanding what's, what's going on on, on, on seas. Uh, sort of a, three layers can be perhaps recognized uh, how creative practices can actually be used in, 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 in uh, uh, sort of bringing uh, more knowing into the picture what's actually going on in an ecological sense, in, in cultural sense, uh, built on knowledge, scientific knowledge, and, and understanding the sort of the fundamentals. Caring aspect is, is, is a second layer where we're, we're trying to build, uh, build empathy, uh, anchoring our values to this uh, development, making in a, emotional contacts uh, to, to issues so that the action, which is the third level, can actually be be realized, active participation and collaboration. So I, I think it's a quite nice example where, where we have a very, very much sort of an intertwined uh, mechanisms uh, from science, engineering to design and arts involved. Another very nice example is actually also mentioned in this book uh, called Chem Arts I Initiative, which is very much uh, in, in educational side. Uh, enabling experimentations on material, different kind of bio-based materials and then putting art uh, to together in that exploration, really creating uh, interesting new material-based artistic expressions. And uh, it's, a, it's a quite popular uh, 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 minor subject in, a, in our educational portfolio. Very interesting. I think this book, uh, I hope you will give it to President Designing Ursula von der Leyen <laughs> and, uh, and also other decision makers, because it's not only relevant for the student, I suppose, yeah. the decision designing I have, change. I have four copies with me, so... Very good. <laughs> we'll make sure that, uh, that, they, get, that they get them. Um, I think we shall now try, because we can chat for, for hours, but uh, we would like to uh, also involve the audience in this conversation. And um, I'm holding here something which is called um, the catch box. Um, and what is this? So we want to, I'm going to throw it in the audience. And the person who is going to catch the box uh, can ask a question. So you have to speak here. Here is the microphone. And you can ask uh, the question. And then when you ask that question, that person should throw it to another person. So we'll take two questions and then we'll come back to the uh, to our panelists so um, you know uh, let's 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 do the game so i'll do first the <laughs> hi i'm christina nice. stand up stand up please okay stand up uh, good morning everybody Hi. Is it on? I'm Christina. Uh, may, can you is it, listen? It's, it's not on, I guess. It's not on. Is it? Is it? 
Oh, that's what you do with these all those gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. I think ah, yes. okay. Ah. It just matters too. Okay. <laughs> I have a question for to Petri, please, because I know that in Finland the public service broadcasting, so the, the way to do education in the country, is strongly allied with uh, with television and other supports. And I'd like to know how, in the, in the spirit of the new European Bauhaus, you try to integrate a kind of pop vision through eventually uh, television or other media to your, uh, to, to your approach. So how to combine academy with, uh, with pop vision through eventually uh, media like public medias. So now I uh, throw to another. You one. throw to another. Do so we pick up another question? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm not quite uh, prepared for any questions. So <laughs> <laughs> um, just um, enjoying uh, listening. So if anyone else has a <laughs> <laughs> volunteering. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is Alexandre. Uh, uh, thank you very much for organizing this, uh, uh, this, uh, this event. And um, I'm very impressed by the, the, the panelists, and uh, in particular, uh, Professor Danica, uh, Danica Kashitz. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I have one question, which is the following. The situation uh, over 100 years have, have changed. In 1919, uh, was a certain situation. Now we are in uh, 2022. In particular, at that time, there was no internet. There was no internet. And uh, um, the, 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 the Bauhaus was a school in one place, which was Weimar, then moved to Dessau, then moved to uh, Berlin. Now we are in a situation where we have internet and uh, with connections and or, or a different situation. So how would you uh, say uh, the situation uh, has evolved and uh, has an impact on, the, in particular, the education? And I would just say one, one more thing, which is, uh, uh, the, the, the famous thinker Pascal, he said, uh, well, uh, c'est un, un, un cercle où le centre est nulle part et la circonférence est partout. And I think uh, internet is very much linked to that. And I would like to, to hear ab about you uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the education and, and the situation, how it evolves from 1919 and, and, and the day today. Uh, I send it back to you. Merci. Maybe you. Well, I bring it. <laughs> <laughs> So, the first question was for you, Petri. Uh, I think you. the second one as well. <laughs> okay. no. I, I, I think only the first one, really. Uh, but uh, yes, thank you for, 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 for a very good and, uh, and I, I would say, multifaceted uh, question. Uh, for me, uh, how universities and, and media, uh, including public uh, broadcasting, uh, uh, organizations work together actually uh, can be recognized in, in different ways uh, and it's a it's a kind of a multi-directional collaboration uh, it's it's a bit difficult maybe to give an uh, sort of exhaustive answer to, to to your good question but but I, I think we we try to keep the channel a lot of uh, a lot open and and have a have a dialogue on on the ways that we can learn uh, from the media in the in the rhythm and, and in, the, in the forms that we can we can produce uh, let's say teaching material also for for higher education institutions so there's a there's a sort of a material level collaboration in developing new teaching material but it's also that we have a very good sort of an archive of, of different kinds of material uh, available in in Finland which can be uh, also directly used in uh, in education in different fields so so, so as a kind of a depository of, of material, uh, as a resource for education, I, I think that's, that's also a, a very important uh, perspective. But when we are uh, moving forward in developing different kinds of uh, online and hybrid solutions also to, 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 to education, I, I think that connection between media and, and higher education becomes, and, and education overall becomes more and more important all the time. So I'm really uh, also eager to see what we will uh, discover in the, in the coming years, keeping the dialogue open between the parties. 
Thank you. I think, Danica, you could uh, sort of reflect uh, oh, about, so, uh, uh, <laughs> in any case, you know, the difference between uh, 100 years ago and now with, uh, with reference to Pascal. Well, Pascal, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, you know, after two years of uh, Corona, <laughs> I'm very, very happy that we are, uh, you know, we, that we are in presence again. And of course, back to your question, you cannot compare it, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was an, another time, it was an analog time, you know, in the in, in, uh, 100 years ago. And today we live in a, in a kind of reality, which is, you know, our identity is increasingly shaped by digitalization. You know? So we, we live actually in the digital world and in the, another world, in the physical world, and it changes every day. So it's a working process. I, I, I don't think I feel kind of... Um, I, ha I have not the distance to reflect on it because I am in this process, you know, as an artist and as a person and, of course, as a professor as well. And I see that the new generation deals in another way, you know, with the, with the medias, working with media, social medias are part of these artistic strategies, you know, I'm teaching. So it means actually that a lot of artists are just working only with these new medias uh, in terms of social media and so on, you know. So there are a lot of, a lot of possibilities and the Bauhaus University, Weimar, is, for example, very, very open to this kind of new uh, realities uh, shaped by digitalization and so on. We have a kind of really ongoing research project, Digital Bauhaus, and that is something which is really, uh, yeah, developing very, very strongly, you know, and yeah. in, all, in all four faculties in our university. Mm. But you cannot compare it. It's, it's mm. no. In any case, fortunately, we have it now, and that's why this it. whole new European yeah. Bauhaus process uh, uh, could spread so yes. quickly and to so many um, uh, partners and stakeholders. As you know, there are so many organizations that uh, got involved uh, from the academic world, the universities, the uh, civil society organizations like, like mine, Europa Nostra, um, artists. So that's why, you know, we have this tool. Now, but we definitely need the presence as well, kind of... Mm. To, to work in physical presence be, because it cannot be just, you know, kind of digital teaching. You know, we, ex we had a lot of digital uh, 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 online courses in the corona time, it's, but I, I think, uh, you know, for the students it was really very difficult, mm. I have to say, you know. Indeed. From so my this... students coming from all over the world, you are coming from Brazil, and then you see in tiny room, you know, for two years. So uh, we tried really to, to have so many uh, physical projects as possible. So it yeah. means in the physical space, and it worked. So in this post-pandemic time, let's hope it yeah. is indeed going to be <laughs> definitely a post-pandemic time, let's now talk in this uh, final segment of our conversation about... Uh, about the future, um, what can we do better? And what would be the messages that uh, you would like to convey to the um, uh, European Union team working on promoting uh, the new European Bauhaus initiative and you know, with the ambition that indeed also become a movement? For the moment, it is an initiative with the, an ambition uh, to become a movement and something that would irrigate uh, all policies and all segments mm. of life. And so when it comes to education, because that's what is our, yeah. you know, we say, we started with said, let's imagine it, but I would say also, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what would be your, let's start with you, Petri, um, your key messages to the leaders and decision makers in European Union uh, with regard to education. Uh, I know also Finland is the country that is considered as the country with the best education system uh, in Europe and perhaps the world. So uh, your I, key messages. I, I hope so that it's a, it's a fact and I, at least we're trying to develop as we, as we move forward. And I, I, I think the first key message actually would be uh, that let's think about education indeed as a system. It's a system of, of different step, steps, different phases, 
even though I'm easily talking about higher education, uh, it cannot happen without proper uh, uh, education before, before that in, in the primary education and, and secondary education as we, as, as, as we are building a student's path uh, so that she or he uh, can get high quality education uh, uh, everywhere. That's, that would be the ideal. And uh, in order to realize that, of course, we need a lot of things, but uh, for sure we need understanding that education needs and is an investment. So uh, we cannot escape that. And uh, that's a very concrete thing, I would say, to, 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 to sort of mention. But at the same time, uh, I, I think, and, and this is much more complex to, to, to say how it works and how it develops, but I think it's very important to, to build culture, to build values where we really appreciate uh, uh, not only education as an objective, but also learning and teaching as a, as a journey. And for instance, uh, the profession of teacher, how do we recognize and explicate that the teachers really do remarkable work, uh, no matter the stage of the education we're talking about. And uh, talking about the, uh, the, the sort of the secret of, of Finnish educational system, I, I think that's something that we have succeeded, at least in historical, historical uh, perspective, that we have created a culture where let's say being a teacher is a very appreciated uh, choice in, in, uh, in, in life. I could talk a a yeah. long about this, but, but let's, let's... This is an extremely important statement and uh, uh, we shall definitely pass it, pass it on. Mm. Um, Danica, you, um, you know, your messages, because... Let's imagine. <laughs> let's imagine. Let's imagine. I think imagination is also a wonderful investment, you know, investment in the future. If we imagine things, we are still, we are creating space for action. You know, and we are starting to create a new reality and the, uh, and the future. And as, as an artist, actually, you know, I, I work with utopias and that is a material the artworks are made of. Hmm. So it is not just, you know, imagine, but if you imagine things, you are starting to develop a new world. And, and think I that think that is, uh, if we imagine, you know, things and imagine our future uh, and uh, uh, actually um, that is the best way, you know, to, to, to actually to be in the world. Hmm. And do you think that there is space for more interaction between the world of art um, yes. and, and education and the institutions? Because imagining uh, the, the, yes. the new world and it needs institutions resources. are not always it's best. It's investment. In yeah. I thought that uh, to imagine things, imagination is also investment. So it means we need uh, resources, we need, uh, 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 we need the projects, we, with, uh, we, we need the resources, you know, to, 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 to develop new things, to experiment. And the experiment is the core of the whole Bauhaus, you know. So, and I don't think that the art world nowadays is separate from the world. Mm. It's a part of the world. It works with Indeed. all these compli mm. compli complexities. And that somebody who is teaching public <coughs> art, it means mm. actually that this kind of complexity in, mm. in, in day we work at is actually our material. You know, how can we reach the audience? How can we, how, how can we get an, another level of communication? That is something what art can do. Mm. I, I, I cannot resist adding that I, I, I fully agree. I mean, if we look at, take a look at the different, uh, different uh, curricula, of, of, of various disciplines, we sometimes still think that art, design and creativity is something that we add on, but we actually would need to consider how to build that in, uh, in, in engineering, in, in, uh, in many others. So I, I think that's, that's an important process. We, I think we are generally understanding or at least improving our understanding in that, but a lot to do still in practice. 
We have been talking about that necessity to break the silos also and to, uh, to do much more also interdisciplinarity, but not just between various uh, academic disciplines, but between art, between heritage, between uh, science, uh, technology. And Definitely. that's again uh, the, 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 the key message when the whole process was launched with the new European Bauhaus was about this involving all these various disciplines in the, in the process of the uh, green transformation. Would you? So would you? Would... That's exactly, I, I think it's, it's well put. Uh, I, I fully agree. And uh, as said, uh, I think we are in a situation where we have acknowledged that dealing with these cl complex and, and highly challenging issues in the world actually calls for that. But now we are trying to, to sort of operationalize that at the level of, let's say, higher education. Uh, we are not ready yet how to do that, but uh, at least I think the direction has been recognized that sort of a trans into cross disciplinary uh, uh, approach that uh, that needs to be achieved one way or another and there are different strategies you, you you can of course you can build programs around around those ideas but you can also build integrated solutions so that uh, it's sort of embedded in in different disciplinary uh, uh, programs uh, the understanding how we need art, creativity and design in various places. Danica, uh, could you say that all those various um, uh, work that you have done, uh, also these projects that you have shown us, uh, have, you can already feel an, that there was a tangible impact uh, that you have uh, created in the uh, in the places where it was going on, uh, that you, you, you could demonstrate that tangible impact? I think that is, I, I, I think so, you know, so because we are as an artist, but also as an, a professor working with, with the students and from, with the students coming from all over the world, the most important things that we really learn from each other. Hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. in, in terms that we really learn from each other. That we, because all, the, all, all of these people have a really very, very different background, also cultural background, and then when we are talking, okay, which kind of uh, notion of art we are talking about. If I have artists from China, from Singapore, from, I don't know, uh, Iran uh, or, or Peru, you know, so, so then, then, then I think this kind of uh, translating things and uh, bringing things to a new understanding, you know, of, of what does it mean to be in the world, mm -hmm. that is what we can do as mm -hmm. educators mm -hmm. and, and as artists. You know, so, and I think uh, art is nothing else than the possibility that we all together develop. Mm -hmm. And to cope also to with the diversity, from each you said. other, yes. And to, to, to sort yeah. of uh, to learn embrace, from, yes. embrace and not be, have, yeah. not be afraid of yeah. diversity, but embrace the diversity as something yes. that is richness and not the weakness no. of our society. And we are learning from audience as well. And the audience became, you know, if you are a lot of artists work participatory, it means that uh, somehow, you know, people who are not artists are part of the project and becoming part of the project. So all these, uh, uh, all, 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 all these borders are very fluid. You know, and I think mm -hmm. that is the, the beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, the new European Bauhaus also used the, the, uh, the, the word that we want to make a more beautiful uh, society, which, yeah. is, which I find a revolution yeah. in the European Union uh, sort of narrative. Um, how much is uh, sort of beauty and the, the, the quest for beauty also present in the educational system or in you know, what, what you have been uh, working uh, in your uh, univers university level or in artistic uh, work that you have been doing? That the is the beauty, beauty, if you really uh, learn from other people and other people learn from you and you create uh, something hmm. together. What could be more beauty? Beautiful. I, I, I agree, and, and, and beauty is a nice word uh, to be used in this context, because I, I think when we look at the ch challenge of building uh, su a, system a sustainable future, that's a beautiful uh, objective, uh, and that's also 
something that, that, that calls efficiency of using materials, efficiency of using resources. So sustainability, beauty and efficiency can actually be built in in a way that I guess surface level doesn't seem to be uh, the most obvious combination of, 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 of concepts and words, but they're actually very much uh, aligned towards the, the same way of thinking. So, so I, I, I definitely welcome uh, taking the sort of the beauty approach to, to, to education and understanding it, it maybe in a, in a broad sense that what works, what works efficiently and, and uh, uh, is good for the world and good for, for its people, it's, it's probably beautiful. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's a nice uh, lighthouse concept for us. So beauty is actually, is a, 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 is a deep word, you know? Mm. And I think if we understand uh, beauty as a, as a kind of poetic dimension of human existence, then, then I think uh, that is a very deep term, you know? Yeah. And not only human, but also non-human existence mm, and, and, and existence of everything. So I don't mind the word. <laughs> Indeed, it's not only about beautiful places, but the beautiful minds yeah. and, and beautiful human beings. Yeah. This afternoon, Europa Nostra will have a side event uh, in the town hall of Brussels, uh, and we will have a discussion also of, mm -hmm. uh, on that concept of beauty uh, in, um, uh, as part of the key, mm. core values mm. of the mm. new but European But traumatic Bauhaus. experience is always part of a beauty. You know, that is very important. Very, very good point. And so even if I was not allowed, but I think I still have a time to throw uh, uh, this catch box once, uh, once uh, and, and there is someone who is going to speak about beauty this <laughs> afternoon, so I wanted to get the, 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 the catch box. Thank you, Znieska. You hear me? Yes. yes. But I will not speak now about beauty because I can <laughs> I can go very very far as you in the afternoon. You know. as, as you remember, I during my time of presidency I used the, the term Renaissance and the beauty has a lot to do with the Renaissance. Ah. Luca Jaillet, uh, former president of the European Economic and Social Committee. But my question was more direct to, to both of you. Because in the first part of this panel, you said two things that, from my point of view, are very important, the original Bauhaus. The first is that this was about redesigning the way of life. Mm -hmm. And the second is that the real lesson is the redesigning the way of life. On discovering big things is always starting from small things dealing with the ordinary life of people. So as today, we are deeply challenged the, the word of Ursula von der Leyen yesterday opening the festival from Rome. The, the, the challenge of the climate change is become more and more urgent and now uh, due to the Russian invasion to become independent in energy even accelerate or double mm. this one. So this need to redesign our future way of life starting for small things that is at the core of this work, of your work. How can you, as you both are a university, can contaminate all the other space of education? Because school and university should prepare people for becoming actor of change. Mm. But most often, is preparing people to be, to be actor of conservation. So how can this movement that start from this, and for your role, can contaminate all the education pushing all the instrument of education in the university and in secondary school as a movement for change take in this perspective. Thank you. People oh. make changes, you know, so that. Well, yeah, what a, what a great question. Uh, yeah. Again, a very big question. Uh, maybe if I leave the philosophical side uh, a little bit aside, maybe, maybe I just take a concrete, concrete approach uh, because I, I think it's also important as, as is in, in the Bauhaus doing things really uh, and, and taking uh, small steps. 
what we are at least trying is that we are very actively engaging as a university with, with, the, with, with the secondary schools and even with the primary schools, not only student, students of, of, of pupils of those schools, but also teachers uh, and, and study counselors or, or many others. So conveying uh, what we understand from, uh, from science, art and design and trying to sort of uh, convey that message into, into teachers and, and students in, in, in those, uh, in those uh, stages of the, of the educational system. Of course, uh, we have a background idea that they will come to, to, to study in Aalto University, but, but at the same time we are doing uh, uh, something that I think uh, is related to, to your question, that we, we're trying to, to, to explicate what we know on the basis of science, what kind of a things are needed in the world, and uh, saying that please consider uh, joining this, uh, this movement and this be the change maker in this, in this process as, as you move forward. So, uh, but mm -hmm. it's a very good question. Uh, happy to digest uh, into that in, in some occasion a bit, a bit more uh, deeply. Danica, perhaps you can also yes, tell the story of your actually, hero from Zenica. No, no but <laughs> no. just about this imaginary Bauhaus, you know. So uh, it was actually the idea, you know, because the project was... Uh, we started with the project in 2015, so it was four years before this kind of 100 years of Bauhaus, which was a kind of big, big event in, in, in the whole Germany, you know. And then, um, actually, it was the idea, how can we create something uh, against this musealization of the Bauhaus? You know, so, and that was kind of, okay, we can uh, uh, create a kind of uh, uh, experimental social utopian laboratory you know, to, to deal with all these questions uh, of, of kind of, of urgent questions of our time, ecological, political, social, you know, and to open it up for this kind of art and discourse and to discuss it with the audience. That was the idea. And so we started this kind of new collection of Bauhaus, not as a collection of art objects, but collection of kind of, um, yeah, artistic attitudes, you know, in dealing and performative action dealing with this. So it was t totally against the musealization of the Bauhaus. And it's still like this. Mm. Thank you so much. I'm afraid our time, I, 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 the, the time is ticking. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, so now my task just at the end to thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. Danica. Thank you, Petri, thank for you. being with us. Thank you for your um, insightful contribution for this important conversation. You know, how can we imagine uh, a better education and, and sort of the importance of education in this whole new European Bauhaus initiative? We have looked into the heritage, uh, the inspiration from the original uh, Bauhaus, uh, but as we have just heard, uh, we using it as inspiration without wanting to do a musealization. Mm. Uh, it's rather to make it a new relevance, give it a new interpretation in the time the living, that we are living now. Um, we have then looked into um, the present day situation uh, and, and, and sort of there were some very uh, important messages that our panelists uh, have passed and we want to pass it further to the um, uh, leaders uh, and, and all the partners of the New European Bauhaus Initiative. First of all, that, um, uh, you know, we need to approach in a holistic way uh, the, the education and in the sense that for, from early, uh, earliest ages, from schools, uh, elementary school, to the, um, uh, to the academic uh, institutions, to the universities, and then also to um, sort of learning uh, and educating people also with acting, mm -hmm. artists, uh, and action on the ground. Uh, also holistic in the sense between various disciplines, science, technology, art, heritage, and thank you for the book that we have also got, Designing <laughs> Change uh, from the, the Alto University. Uh, we have also spoken about the the importance of imagination, the extremely important, the message from Danica, uh, and uh, we should uh, 
we should encourage our decision maker to be a little bit more bold and, and, and more audacity and imagining uh, also uh, the, the, the world and then doing and it. Invest mm. in and invest. And invest. Yeah, now, the world investing. <laughs> Both of you were using the words investing because it's investing in people, mm. investing in beautiful human beings with all their traumas and dreams, uh, but investing. And, uh, and also the wonderful message, uh, Petri, that the profession of teacher should be one of the most beautiful, beautiful profession and most important professions in our society. It's not the case now. And they are the vital workers. You mm. know that the, 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 the health workers were the vital workers during the pandemic. But in the times of such change, such crisis, the vital workers are teachers. So let's invest <laughs> in them. So thank you so much to our panelists. Thank you for, uh, for the people here in the Gare Maritime. And thank you very much to all the people who have been following us online. Over to you, Annalise. So, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to Sneska for a wonderful um, panel discussion. It, uh, there are messages there. I think they were heard loud and clear far beyond this uh, venue and the people online. So, for now, we take a short break, but I would kindly invite you to be back here at Gar Maritime, back online too, at 12 o'clock, because we're going to take you on a very special trip to Lagos, Nigeria. Really, I mean, this is not promo talk. This is heartfelt. Do be back. You don't want to miss this. Make sure you've got your earplugs with you, um, because this is going to be very immersive, very sensuous. This is not just talk. So be here because you are going to live an experience. 12 o'clock sharp. See you then. Thank you.